Hello, I'm Larry Seidlinger for LCTV and thanks for watching. Tonight we're talking Town Talk and we're talking about the Lincoln County Food Initiative that has started here in Damascotta Region. And my guests tonight are Karen Ann Hager and Jess Brightup. Karen Ann from the YMCA and Jess from the Healthy Lincoln County. Folks, I've got something special for you, so watch this. It's important to remind people in every scenario that we're in the middle of a global pandemic. These are unprecedented times. It's just not normal. We fight diversity in many different ways. Food insecurity is just, is just one of them, but it's a big one. You folks are involved in this new thing, the Lincoln County Food Initiative. So I'll start with you, Karen Ann. You work for the Y. You've been involved for the Y like since the Y was a Y. You run you know, everything down there with youth camps and whatnot, and you got this thing called the food bus that you started. Give us a little bit of that, and then we'll get into this food initiative. Sure. The Fill the Y bus um, started, like you said, several years ago, and we did it about four times a year, and that was to tackle any food insecurities in Lincoln County, and we support the food pantries. We also support the uh, teen snack cubbies at the various places like the Skidumfer Library and also at the schools so that there, you know, there's teachers that notice that kids come to school without a packed snack or thing. So we've already been doing that, uh, like I said, four times a year or when asked to do it. And so it was a natural fit when we started uh, dealing with the COVID crisis. Okay, Jess, now as the other ringleader in this, this fantastic thing that you guys have created, this Lincoln County Food Initiative, how did you happen to get involved? You work for Lincoln Health, Healthy Lincoln County. Yes, yeah, so it's an interesting story because I wasn't necessarily involved in the food insecurity work before Lincoln County Food Initiative. I was doing substance use prevention. So going into schools, talking with groups of students, giving community presentations on, you know, what are the trends? What, what can we do as community members to help lift our youth up and to provide healthy alternatives for them? So uh, I was brought in just because of my work with Karen Ann. I've partnered with her on a number of different initiatives for substance use prevention. And I've talked to Jane Gravel frequently. She's helped out on different projects. Uh, so I was brought in as this was starting. And I come with some background of organizing and managing groups. So those skills I got to completely put into motion. So let's talk about your partners. Because you've got some partners that are backstage that are vital and that really actually got it kind of started moving in the right mm -hmm. direction. And then you girls jumped in and grabbed the reins. And, and, and so tell us a little bit about your partners in this. Sure. So one of our biggest partners is Kiev Wavis Education. So when this first started, Jane had her meal delivery service going. Jane be Jane Gravel. Jane Gravel with Main Street Grocery. And she knew that this was a little bit bigger than her and her volunteers could work with. So Lincoln Academy and Kiev Wavis Education and Karen Ann and I and Fernalds and a number of other partners I'm sure we'll get to, they put their heads together to say, how can we continue this? Lincoln Academy said, we have a kitchen, we can make the meals. Kiev said, we can deliver them. So they did that for a few days, and then we realized that Kiev can take this and run with it from their own kitchens. So they can do the meal preparation, the delivery. Lincoln Academy can help us by promoting this service and being kind of this safety net in case we need more meals produced in multiple kitchens. Uh, but Kiev Wavis is one of the largest partners because they, right now, they're cooking food for deliveries on Friday. They're, they're preparing boxes. They're, they're working hard as we speak. Good stuff. Now, Karen, how did the Y, how did you at, at the Y get involved? I mean, you got the, this little bus that you've been filling up on a, every Tuesday down at, down at uh, Main Street Grocery. Right. How did you get that? How does this all work? How do you get a tie well, on? I think How'd it you was a natural. You, you didn't yeah. just bump into each other on the street. And <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I think um, like Jess said, we had already been doing uh, initiatives together, um, so we know our work style together. But also, um, the Y is a community hub, and that's what we like to be. 
Um, my role as community outreach and community navigation um, was was sought upon, you know, by a few people saying you need to be part of this. Much like Jess said, you know, you're invited in. The why has to be involved. That's what I kept say, kept hearing. Um, and at the, simultaneously, Jane and I were down at the store talking about we need to just throw some regular fill the Y bus events in there um, to support the food pantries. So there's several arms to the collaboration and. You know, collaboration has really been the key word that we keep bringing ourselves back and reining in is, is that it can always be, um, other people can always be involved in various ways. Well, we did a, when this, this pandemic hit back in early March here at LCTV, we did a little skip there with uh, Jane down at Main Street Grocery. We did some filming down there. And two people that really were key were Ricky and Rosie. Uh, Richards from Down Infernals, right. and boy were they gangbusters, and they just kind of really, really got it all started, and, and is that when you guys came in and kind of picked up the ball? Yeah, and I think it set a great example that, you know, there's there's room for everyone, whether it's a profit, non-profit, whether it's individuals uh, helping out. There's been other businesses that have stepped up as a result of Jane and Ricky and Rosie. And my, that's my, kind of leads me to my next question, question, your community sport. You've had the sheriff's department, the local police. Tell us a little bit about, about that involvement. Sure. So uh, Damascata PD is my partner already. They have been for years as far as and doing kudos the... kudos to Chief Wallach down there. Yeah, totally supportive on, on a lot of things that we do because we like to... Originally, it was it, we want to support the, the food insecurities, but we were also mentoring teens up through on community service and they've gotten involved with a lot of things so so chief has always been my partner in that and we tackle a lot of different things and then uh, LCSO we connected with with Jess so Jess, been, Jess has been able to connect. Jess tell us what the Sheriff's Department you've got some inroads over there you've made some headway. Yeah so uh, back in my substance use prevention days uh, Chief Deputy Randmaker and I worked closely on initiatives so once we brought a bunch of surplus food into the county um, he was my first call like Rand we need to help get this food to the pantries we're already using our volunteers for deliveries for a variety of other purposes can you help us get this food to the pantries without hesitation he said absolutely what do you need and when so they have been coming down with their trailer you know attached to their LCSO pickup truck or van filling it up with food, bringing it to the pantries, unloading. And actually, I just left the warehouse where we met up with two deputies who loaded up food for the Whitefield Food Pantry today. That's so they're, they're my Johnny on the spot. Whenever I need a volunteer, they're there. Good stuff. Okay, so let's talk about the needs. Who needs this food? What, what are you finding? It's not necessarily low-income families exclusively, is it? It's people that have been out of work and, mm -hmm. and really talk a little bit about that, Jess. Well, when I think about who needs it right now, I think about my friends, people who are musicians, people who are in the restaurant industry, retail workers, people that may even be continuing to work, but maybe their husband got laid off or someone in the family is laid off or their kids are home and they need to feed them and it costs so much money to feed your kids when you're used to sending them to a camp that might supply that. So it's your regular average folks that we're always a step above poverty. They never had to go to food pantries. They probably are just under the qual or just above the qualification for food stamps or other s social services, but they are struggling right now. So how do we reach them and let them know that all this support from the state, from the government, has come in through the through a food channel that we can get to them? So my next question: Are there any requirements uh, on who who gets water? It's just if you have need, come to, come get hold of us. Well, that's the that's yes, and the beautiful part is the government has re, you know removed some restrictions. You don't need to indicate your income. You don't need to do some of the I, things you had to do to to get services in the past. Uh, so, for at least for the food that we're bringing in, you just need to let us know that you're in need right now. Something has changed in your living situation, and then we can give you as you know as much support as we can offer. So, Karen Ann, is this, this isn't necessarily, although you, we've called it the Lincoln County or you've called it the Lincoln County Food Initiative, it really has far, far greater reach if necessary, doesn't it? 
I think it does have potential. I think that um, Jess and I have had some really frank conversations about this. Um, the group, the core group at the, at the beginning said, you know, we want to focus small and do a good job. And, um, but Jess and I have talked and I had shared that, you know, other, other initiatives or other things that I'd been involved in, you know, there's, there's some funders that have actually asked, would you be willing to mentor another community? And we've had other communities reach out to us. Um, Knox County is, is usually one that would, would call in when, when we did Lincoln County Recovery Collaborative, Knox County also asked us, what did we do? And, and I, you know, and we've been saying, let's do a good job. Let's, let's really, you know, iron out all the kinks. And, and if others want to hear how we did it, then that, let's be the model. And Sure, no sense reinventing the wheel. Yeah, yeah. and YUSA has actually taken our uh, video and spread it uh, globally now. So it's on our Y-Link um, page that has a resource for other communities. And I think that's the responsible thing to do is when you've done something well. Absolutely. And you show a collaboration and not one, you know, not one entity has taken ownership of this, when you can show the greater impact by a collaboration, we should be. It's almost like a responsibility. We've talked about that and agreed, like, it's almost our responsibility to model to other communities because, you know, imagine the impact that happens. Have you been surprised, uh, Karen Ann, you and, you and I both lived around this community a long, long time. Have you been surprised at the outpouring of, of generosity of the people? No, I've, you know, my, you know, we've had some unfortunate in my family personally and, you know, from the age of, of me being 12 years old and uh, this community has never failed us. And in, in almost, you know, I always say, this is my thank you to the community, whether it was pastors or teachers or, you know, community organizations, the rec center back when it was called the rec <laughs> center, the, rec penny center, yeah. kept us all in line. So. <laughs> I think it's um, it's not a shock. This community has been very gracious, and and uh, we've had lots of folks reaching in, and you know, reaching out to Jess, or reaching out to myself, or reaching out to you, Larry, and saying, "Hey, how can I be involved?" And well, we uh, at LCTV have just been tickled to death to do what we can do to to make it work. And we're and we'll, so we'll, grateful. We'll, and yeah. we're doing more if we can. So, Jess, last time, where are you getting all this? This is the question I get all the time. Where is all this food coming from? So you've, you've, you've really bird dogged this and put the nose to the ground and she can sniff out a box of cereal, can't <laughs> she? She can. <laughs> Just give us a little insight. Where did you find all this food? Well, the surplus food was brand new to me. I didn't know that there was surplus available for free that we could get. Um, and I found out that there's a USDA program, the Emergency Food Assistance Program. And they have a warehouse up in Augusta. So they, due to the COVID-19 release of funds from the government, they were given three times their annual budget to purchase additional food to come in. And when I connected with them, they said, yes, I want to bring it into Lincoln County. This is our MO. How much do you need? Sky's the limit. So we have that food source. And then there are other partners that have been helping us tremendously. For instance, Midcoast Hunger Prevention Partnership in Brunswick. They have been providing our food pantries with additional fresh items, frozen items. Uh, it's kind of a smorgasbord. And we headed down to their warehouse in Brunswick and they loaded us up with snack items to hand out to families. So you have your source from the government, your source from other community groups that want to help, just like us. And then you have Good Shepherd that is supplying food to the food pantries uh, directly. And then on top of that, you have your Rennies who want to donate additional food items. Twin Village Food Bank Farm has been amazing for us. Yes. Yeah. Now, how did you get all this food from Augusta to Dam Scotta? Well, Larry, I'm looking at you. <laughs> but it wasn't me that got it here. <laughs> well, our buddy's over to Walterboro, and I, folks, I want to take this opportunity to shout out to Jeff Pace and, and all the folks over to Northeast Transport because yes. they just didn't even flinch. They put a man in a truck and I just made a phone call. So it was good stuff. And Jeff, thank you very much for, for that. But they, you guys, they made it happen and made it happen pretty quick. They made it happen instantly. Did you have any idea how much 14 or 15 pallets of food even really was? Well, let me tell you. So. <laughs> 
I get this email from uh, from the gentleman up in Augusta, and I said, can you help me visualize how much food this is? Because at this time, we had like a box truck. And he said there are 11 pallets, five feet high. <laughs> so when I started, I stood up, I'm 5'6". I'm like, oh no, this is, this is too much food. It's not gonna fit in the box truck. What are we going to do? And that's when I called Karen Ann. She said, I know a guy. And that's when she called <laughs> you, and then Jeff got brought into the fold. That's and what uh, friends are for. You made it effortless. It was completely impossible to me at that point in time. That many pallets, five feet tall, how are we going to do that? So let's take it a little further. You, you, I, off camera, we shared some stories of people that have stepped up, but you had one yesterday that really touched my heart with the young fellow there. Talk a little bit about what he had some money and how he got that money and what he decided to do with it. Yeah, so we're talking about Aiden Bryant, and uh, he's just one of the many teens that are amazing. And he's, um, you know, our Y kids that, you know, we always think of teens as, as being a kind of a pain in our hiney, and, and uh, I don't find that the case all the time. We've got some Y teens. We've got Essie Martin, which I'll let Jess share, but um, Aiden, Aiden's mom came to me and said, you know, the, the eighth graders at uh, South Bristol weren't able to go on their trip. And so, and they fundraised for this trip. So they were all given um, money. They dispersed all the money. Um, and Aiden was planning on buying his first car. Uh, Allison had shared with Aiden our video that we had, we had put out to get out to the community. And, and Aiden decided that he wanted his money um, to go towards uh, this LCFI and so I asked I asked in particular because I really wanted him to understand it is okay to say exactly where you want your money to go and um, he really wanted it to go to the deliveries for the shut-ins and so he came down I asked if he would come down and uh, uh, officer booth was there um, as usual and uh, we took the opportunity for for Aiden to be there with Officer Booth and hand $100 over um, to go specifically. And it was perfect timing because we had an order to put in through Main Street Grocery and it was able to buy like eggs and milk and bread, all those staple items that go in those delivery boxes that KWE puts out. That's not only a great story about a kid, but tells you a little about something about some great parenting behind that kid. And I know, Jess, you've got some stories to share. Yes, I've got a, another kid's story as well. So Bring it on. I got a call from Essie Martin. That's Jenny Mayer's daughter. So Jenny is the director of communications over at Lincoln Academy, and she's been hugely important for LCFI, helping us with graphics and things like that, among other items. So Essie calls me and says, we did a backyard run-a-thon. She goes, we had no idea how successful we would be. You know, we had people that were running and logging their times, and it became this real community effort. And she said, we raised thousands of dollars, and we want to give some of those proceeds to LCFI. And what they're doing with the other um, portion is buying local business, like businesses in town, buying gift cards for them to keep those businesses afloat. And really cool. I was just floored. They have a video that uh, I'll have to send to you, Larry. It's, uh, they were announcing their results and how much fun they had with the runathon. So kind of taking this poor situation we're in, making something enjoyable for people to do, and then turning around and taking any of the proceeds and pouring it back into your community. How cool is that? What kind of a response do you get from people that don't necessarily know that you're gonna drive up to their door yet and pass them a box of food. That must be a little yeah. overwhelming sometimes. I know it would be for me. I had a local mom who um, a neighbor had actually reached out and um, and told of this local mom, three young kids, and uh, you know, I just did a little investigating, found out where she worked, <laughs> called the boss and coworker, and asked a few questions. And sometimes it's not about you know, it's not about a screening process. It's do they have pets? Do they have little ones? Do they need diapers? Do they need, and, um, and we've, done, we've done a couple of deliveries and um, it was a great opportunity for me to take you know, my nephew down and show him a little community service because we're not able to take the Y teens right at the moment 
due to restrictions. Um, I grabbed my nephew, we took a drive, and we um, dropped these boxes off. And the, and the look on mom's face, you know, I just let her be right in there on the screen porch and just said, this is for you. You have lovely neighbors that love you a lot. And your uh, coworkers and your boss is supporting you um, by letting me know that information. So uh, please accept this. And, and she was so grateful. Um, it's just amazing. It's amazing to watch, you know, w holding one baby, couple around her, her legs, and the, the look of shock, but the gratitude of knowing, and that relief, I think, is the biggest emotion that I see um, that can just get, them, get her by until she can get back to work. And knowing that, you know, her coworkers and her boss was part of the solution was just a feeling of love you could tell. Jess. <clears throat> Where do you go from here now? You've been doing this, what, two months approximately? Three months Three now. months? Okay, three months, time yeah. goes when you're having fun, I guess. Sure does. Uh, where do you see the Lincoln County Food Initiative going moving forward? Well, my first thing that comes to mind is the importance of our hotline. So when people need information on what programs are out there, they have a number that they can call. And, and we'll have that on the screen. We'll put that up on the TV screen here for everybody. And it's Karen Ann and I that field those calls and we walk them through, you know, the, here's what your food pantry does. Here are the hours of operation. Here's how that whole process looks. Or if that doesn't work for you or you can't get there during that time, here's another program. We can deliver some food to you. We can do a one-time delivery. Or we can connect you to a meal delivery service if that's what you need. So imagine being middle class, suddenly losing your job, not knowing what you can do for food, um, and then having a place that you can call that walks you through all your options. How important is that? Hmm. Hugely. Now, let's back up just a little bit. You talked about Wavis. They were, they were actually preparing hot meals for people at one time, weren't they? Or Kiev, I mean, excuse me. Oh, yes. They're, they're preparing hot meals. So are we they still doing that? They are still doing that, yes. We have a number of folks that are getting hot meals delivered to them twice a week with enough meals in those boxes to last you. How many meals gaps. are we talking about a oh, week? Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see. hundred? Over a thousand. Over a thousand meals a week. Yes. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Right. As of June fifth, we were at over seventeen thousand, and we started March twenty-third. Meals that Wavis gave is yep. prepared. Yep, gave Wavis prepared. And so that out. brings me to my next question: How many families? Do you have any idea, roughly, how many families this food pantry in three months or this food initiative has has been able to? It help, does help fluctuate. Uh, some people, so for instance, one family got on the list for two weeks and then their husband went back to work and she got on her feet and she thanked us, but it helped her get through. Isn't so, that what it's all about? Exactly. Yeah. So it averages between 35 and 40 families a week that are getting meal deliveries. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't include the folks that we've explain the food pantry process to, or we've given some separate, just they needed a box to get by, or something just to help them stretch out their budget. Uh, that's just your families that are on the deliveries because they really are homebound. Right. They have transportation issues, or they're, they're ill, or they're recovering from illness, or s kids at home, no child care, they, they need to be there, they can't leave to go get right. food. Some didn't even know that Main Street Grocery did free delivery. And those those are easy, you know, calls that just went out and they got groceries. So you two really have become your whole Lincoln Initiative has become a navigator for people to go to. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought of maybe encompassing somebody that maybe had some financial background to help people with mortgages or insurances that might not have the knowledge uh, at the low income side of what could what could be do better. Right, right. So some of the stuff that already happens at the Y with outsourcing any okay. of those types of needs, that was happening. Of course, the pandemic made it go on steroids. So it's, it's really connecting and it's not doing the work for them, but it's connecting them to the resources is what the community navigation uh, role really does. So you're right. So so let's say three months from now or six months from now, where do you see this Lincoln County Food Initiative being, Jess? Well, I see us definitely still hanging on tightly to this navigator function. We need to mm. offer this for folks, especially as we head into the fall and winter. We don't know what that's going to look like for us. Our, all of our industries have been interrupted. 
Um, and we know that there's this level of need for meal deliveries that's pretty consistent as well. And I don't see that going away anytime soon. So we, at minimum, we have meal deliveries and we have resource navigation that we are going to be continuing. There, it, there hasn't been another service that we can refer those folks to. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're also working with food pantries and providing networking, convening them weekly so they can share their ideas, share what's working good for them, what's not. Uh, we find what they need as gaps and we try to fill those. So that will continue as well. And creating this, this network, this uh, support group for all the groups working on food insecurity is one of, our, one of our big goals. Right, we definitely want to fill in the gaps that aren't happening already and there, there is Meals on Wheels. Um, but we, we will always have uh, families with someone that has cancer. You know, there'll always, be, uh, there'll always be someone that lost their job suddenly. Um, so we'll, we'll fill those gaps as, as long as this community will support us in doing, supporting the community back. Well, I think it's amazing that you two have taken two uh, nonprofits organizations, one very prominent, the YMCA, mm -hmm. the other Healthy Lincoln County, not known quite so much, certainly a smaller, and you guys have brought them together and, yeah. and you made it work. You've made it yeah. work and that, that's just an amazing feat in itself. That's the piece that we want to model that, uh, you know, that's why YUSA has picked up and been attracted to it is because, you know, the collaboration is talked about in the Y mission and that's the piece that we want to model for other communities because, the, like I said, the greater impact. That's a great model. So I w I've got to wrap this up, folks. My time guy is telling me I've got no time left. You, you ladies have made <laughs> this time go so. A special thanks uh, from us here at LCTV for what well, you guys you. have done and anything mm -hmm. we can do to make it better, or easier, or more informative to people. You just say the word. Uh, so, folks, a special guest, uh, thanks to my guest, Jess Brightup, from Healthy Lincoln County Partners, and my special guest, Karen Ann Hager, special mm -hmm. private place in my heart for her at the Lincoln County, Central Lincoln County YMCA. Folks, it's been Larry Seidlinger for LCTV. We've been talking Town Talk, the Lincoln County Food Initiative. We're so glad you were able to stop in. Check out, uh, we'll have a phone number at the end of this show of where you can call for help and uh, web pages and all that kind of, all the information you need. And if that doesn't work, just call us here at the station and we'll put you in touch. So thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next Saturday night, talking Town Talk. People panicked. They wanted to know how to get food. Food insecurity is just is just one of them, but it's a big one. God, that's the worst part. The shame. You, oh, I wish I could explain. It's this hesitancy. It's, uh, it's them not really wanting to tell you their full situation because once you ask more questions, you realize how dire it is, how they haven't had meat in months because they can't afford it. And then when you s explain that what you're going to do, they're, they're overjoyed, they're, they're shocked, but I don't think they believe that this could ever be long-lasting.